Hey there. I had to fly up to Mexico. Well, didn't have to fly. I wanted to fly up to Mexico to uh, renew my residency for Mexico. And um, I tried Aero Mexico for the first time. It was certainly an interesting experience. Um, I'll show you the flights. And uh, I did two, two flights up there. Uh, Quito, uh, Ecuador to Mexico City, and then Mexico City on to uh, San Jose de Cabo. Why Cabo? Why not? If you're going to renew your, your residency, you might as well go to Cabo to do it. Uh, so they were uh, similar planes, but I had different classes of seats on both, and I'll describe those in the video. And then at the end of the video, we're, let's talk about the customer support, because I had to make some changes, and this is where um, probably some information is worthwhile on that. I try not to be negative at all on this channel, but I think we need to talk about the customer support experience that I had. So we'll do that at the end, though. Let's uh, take a peek at the uh, plane and some uh, of the seats, because that's the fun part. Okay, so the obligatory external airplane shop for Aeromexico. I took two flights to get up there to San Jose de Cabo. The first was on a 737-800. Now, this was in the premier light seating, which is basically just, as you can plainly see, the same old coach seats with the middle aisle blocked. Slightly more leg room. This seat's not any more comfortable than the coach seats, other than a little bit more leg room, like I said. It is quite hard after about three and a half hours on there. However, this is premium light, so you do get a little snack while you fly. Some uh, chips and a treat. Now, the leg of a flight I was really interested in was the premium seating on the 737 MAX between Quito and Mexico. I flew up and back on the flight both times sitting in the premium seating. So this is a little bit of a mix of both, really. But again, this is between Quito and Mexico City. And specifically, the flight I'm showing you here is Mexico City to Quito because it makes sense when I show you the menu that you get. It's a very light menu. And again, this is the part I was most interested in checking out. And this is why I like this premium product on Air Mexico. These seats are awesome. Those headrests come up high enough for me, my six foot three frame. Also, plenty of leg room underneath this seat for, uh, again, I'm about six three and I like the leg room. Now it's time for a nice pre flight drink. Now, I enjoy the, a, a drink. They offer juice or water. I would have liked some champagne or something else, but juice and water is nice and I enjoyed the water. Now, this was an overnight flight leaving out of Mexico City, and I think they nailed the food offering here. Basically, it was a bagel with some salmon. It was light. It was tasty. I enjoyed that uh, chocolate uh, tart thing that they had at the end. And it was really a nice little snack to have before kicking back and trying to catch some sleep on the flight. The whiskey offerings on these flights are, are slim. Uh, I've seen Bushmill, which isn't a, a terrible, it's, it's an okay Irish whiskey, and on this case they had Black Label Scotch. Um, the second sort of snack serving was, as you can see, chips in a Milky Way. Tie that with some scotch, and you got a pretty nice offering in my mind. Okay, now, like so often, the quality of the airline comes down to the people working on the airline, and certainly the flight attendants were uh, reasonably attentive. Um, they were a little slow sometimes, but the service was okay. The seats were um, okay in the first leg, and they were not bad in the, uh, in the second leg that I had where I was in the uh, premium seats. And frankly, those premium seats are one of the better seats I've had in that sort of uh, basic set, set up straight first class world. Uh, the real problem with Aeromexico was customer support. I had to change my flight. I went, had planned two weeks in Cabo, quirk of fate. I couldn't stay there for two weeks. I had to uh, leave, so I had to change my flight. Normally, I just go on the airline webpage and change the flight. I had a class of flight that allowed for uh, a free flight change. One, I didn't know it was a risk that I might need to change my flight, so I specifically booked one that allowed free changes. Now, I would love to just whine about one person, but I talked to three or four, no, four or five customer support people to get my flight 
changed. It was extremely difficult. Um, a lot of it went down to payment. They had trouble taking my payment. One guy would constantly say, uh, your credit card's denied, but it actually never got to the credit card bank. Their payment system um, has got to be pretty horrendous because I had trouble upgrading flights. I could never get a flight upgraded um, reliably online. It kept rejecting the payments. It rejected the points I tried. Changing, they were having trouble clearing the, the payment system. This all bubbled down to some simple, like, I think they had Oregon for the state instead of Washington. It ended up being something really stupid. But the um, uh, it, it wasn't just one person. It was systemic amongst everyone I dealt with. So this is really not somebody being lazy or not somebody wanting to do work. These people really wanted to help me. But the overall systems, this is a, a training failure, a software system failure, I think, on the part of Aeromexico. Uh, not anything to do with the individual people involved. I'm sure they're working on this. And one of the problems I believe they had is when I tried to upgrade my flight, because uh, booking full premium fare w was prohibitively expensive on the journey. And really all I wanted was the overnight part upgraded. That's all I really cared about, because the, the Premier Light I wasn't that interested in. It's not that interesting of a product to pay a lot of money for, that's for sure. It's a standard seat with no metal aisle. Who cares? I mean, uh, that's not worth a lot of money in my mind. Whereas the big seats with that's only two, uh, the 2-2 two -two configuration up front, yeah, I wanted that, especially overnight, especially for the long flight from Quito up to Mexico City. So I tried to change those, and I couldn't. I could not get that changed. It never took the payments. It never took the points. It would never take the upgrades, which was just infuriating at, at all get out. The funny thing was, I actually was upgraded. Um, they're partners with Delta, and I think I just got upgraded because of my status with Delta. And I didn't know that until I actually went in there. The, in fact, the customer service said, nope, we've tried to upgrade you. We absolutely cannot upgrade you. Um, uh, the payment systems are failing. We can't get you. Um, and I logged off. I went back online and noticed I was upgraded. And it was free. So, you know, that's good. It's just the so, so there's systemic problems with not understanding their own system. It's obviously a training issue. This is the only problem I really had with Aeromexico. Um, and again, I try not to be negative on this channel and accentuate the positives. And the positive is I, got, I did get upgraded. The people really tried hard, but this is probably a systemic uh, software and training issue at Aeromexico. Hope that makes sense. Hope you enjoyed the video. And um, thanks for watching. Bye.